In the beginning, there was the mainframe computer. The size of an office, it cost a fortune, and it was slow. Then came desktop and laptop computers, smaller, cheaper, faster. As transistors on silicon microchips continue to shrink, we have palm-sized computers. How small can we get? Imagine computers each the size of a single grain of salt. Roughly every 18 months, the speed of computing doubles because the components are being brought closer together. And if we make the sizes three to four times smaller than they are today, we may be hitting something called the silicon wall. When the components are that close together, you might not be able to really fabricate reliably each component so that they'll behave properly in a circuit. And that's a fundamental limit. In manufacturing these microchips, if you use the limits at the silicon wall, the problem is you cannot put into the several parts of the microchip the atoms reliably where you need them, and so the microchip would fail more often than it does today. Another concern is that the cost of setting up a fabrication lab to build microchips today is about a billion dollars. And as the design rules or the component to component distances get very small, the cost of these uh, fabrication facilities will go up astronomically. So again, some way has to be found around this technological problem. The limitation of smaller semiconductor devices is leading some researchers away from silicon chips and into the smallest world of molecules. In this field, known as molecular electronics, the building blocks of integrated circuits can be far smaller than anything possible with the transistors of silicon microchips. Single molecules can be used to perform the functions of today's silicon-based semiconductors. Thus, research scientists have figured out how to use chemistry to synthesize wires and switches as small as single molecules. Molecular computers that could replace silicon-based ones are still in the research stage. One high-tech company, California Molecular Electronics, has invented and patented the first binary molecular switch. Just one molecule in size, it has the same switching properties used in today's computers. The carotidine molecule, we can switch between two forms, one that is left-handed, one that is right-handed. And just like our hands, these forms are mere images of each other, but are not identical. These novel single molecules applied thousands of times with the processing power at a lower cost without the reliability problems facing silicon. In the coming decade, the vision of the internet everywhere means we'll have computers in cars and appliances in our wallet. Everything that we have and own will have an internet address and be connected to the internet. And as we hit silicon wall in performance, we're going to run out of performance in our machines and have to find new ways to build them. Well, molecular electronics can provide a new technology for that very application. Emerging technologies, such as molecular electronics, could become the computing power of the 21st century. That means today's silicon-powered electronics may soon go the way of the telegraph.